Praise the Lord, everybody, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. No matter where you are, in the city of Peoria, the state of Illinois, or the world, our God is with us. And he said he would never leave us. And he would never forsake us. On this morning, I am coming to you reading from Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, 40th chapter, beginning at the 29th verse. And the word of the Lord says, he give power to the faint, and them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Number 31. Verse 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let us pray this morning. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the multitude of your mercy and the multitude of your grace. Great is your faithfulness unto us. Your compassions fail not. They are new every morning. We realize that we live, move, and have being because of you. We thank you for this day, this time, this season, and this hour. For there is not a mistake and nothing has caught you by surprise. We may have been caught by surprise, but nothing catches you by surprise. And because of that, we can dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Under the shadow of the Almighty. And we will say of the Lord that you are our refuge and our fortress. Our God in him we will trust. Your word says surely you will deliver us from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence. We realize that your word will not return unto us void. But it will accomplish to the place where it is sent. We thank you for your word. For it is a lamp to our feet. And a light to our pathway. Bless the furtherance of this service as we offer up a sacrifice of praise unto you. We say yes to your way, oh God, and yes to your way. Have your way, God. Save God. Heal, deliver, and set free. Bring the backslide of back home. Those that don't know you as their personal Lord and Savior, let them find a relationship with you. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Come on, everybody. Give God praise.
that he has done and doing here at Living Rock Church. I am excited because God has been speaking to us. He has been giving us revelation during this season. And it's been an unusual season, but even in this unusual season, the Holy Spirit of God has been speaking to us. Somebody say, speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Give me a word that will bring forth life and that more abundantly. I do honor the Lord who is the joy of my salvation to you, my father's children. No matter where you are today, I want you to know that God loves you, that God cares about you, and he still have a wonderful plan for your life. For the word of God says in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts and plans that I have towards you, says the Spirit of God, not thoughts of evil, but of good, and for you to have an expected end. And I want you to know your end is going to be exciting because we are victorious through him. Thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. The Lord has placed on my heart to start a series of messages for the month of May 2020. And it's going to be called, the theme is Restore the Altar. Restore the Altar. And on today, we are going to come from the perspective, Return to the Altar. It, it, it's just a few of us here, so look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Return, return to the altar. To God be the glory. I want you to go with me, please, to First uh, Kings 18, 29 through 39. I'm going to do a little reading. There's so much reading in this, but I just want to give you a little bit so you will be able to glean from what from the perspective that we're going to come from today. Uh, starting with verse 29, if you got it, say, I ain't got it. Okay. And it came to pass when midday was passed, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice, nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. Number 30, and Elijah said unto the people, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. This is very significant, what Elijah did. Number 31. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. Israel means prince, for we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of him that called us out of darkness. And we have been grafted in. Somebody say grafted. Yes. We have been adopted into the royal family, number yes. two. All right. And with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in the order, and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid him on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice, and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran around about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel. He had seen, I like that part. He didn't call him Jacob. He called him his new name. Hallelujah. Let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. A couple more verses. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood yes. and the stones and the dust yes. and licked up the water that was in the trench. We serve a consuming fire, God. Number 39, and when all the people saw it, they fell on their face, and they said, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, 
He is the God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and doing of his precious word. For we are going to talk about today, return to the altar. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, speak to our heart in such a way that we're birth forth transformation. We are in a season that we need to hear from you. We don't want to hear from flesh. We want to hear from you. Speak in such a way that it will go this word as far as the north is from the south and east is from the west. Open up our heart and open up our ears, Holy Spirit. I pray that the fire of God will be in my mouth and that I, as I speak, yokes will be destroyed by your anointing. In Jesus' name, let every heart say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I am so excited about starting this new series, Restore the Altar. Yes. I'm excited because the Lord has been speaking to my heart in regards to restoration mm -hmm. of the altar. Our God is an awesome communicator. Yes. In fact, our God talks all the time. Nobody talks like the Holy Spirit. He is the very deity that walks on the right hand side of us. And he speaks to us through his word. Give us this day our daily bread. Yes. He speaks to us through his word. He's been talking. He's the God that always talks. He started from the beginning. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness fell upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, and from the point that he said, and God said, we have been experiencing his word from the first time he said it to 2020 May of this year. He is still and God said, let there be light. We still have light. Let there be the fowls of the air. We still have the birds. Let there be the fish of the sea. We still have the fish. And the word of God. Uh, the Bible says that the flower fadeth, the grass withereth, but the word shall stand forever. This is important. And so as Christians in modern day Christendom, it is important, wonderful people of God, that we have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. The Bible says that my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. It is because of God's voice that has led us to this place. It is because of God's voice that we live, move, and have being. This new edifice that I am preaching in right now is because I had an ear tuned towards heaven that I can hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, it's time to make a move. And when God speaks to you, it is important that you listen to hear what God is saying to the church. Somebody say, speak to my heart, Lord. This is important for he that had an ear not your natural ear, but your spiritual ear. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And I got a word for those that are here and listening to this recording. The Holy Spirit of God is speaking. And it is important that we are listening to what God is saying during this season. So for the last several weeks, God has been speaking to me about this word called the altar. Yes. The altar. And most of us, from a religious perspective, we've heard that word most of our life. Uh, if you're in church, you can hear the preacher saying, come to the altar for prayer or come to the altar for communion or the altar for the wedding. Uh, the altar, you hear that all the time from a religious perspective. When I was a little boy, when you said the altar, that was a very sacred place. Uh, when I was a little boy raised in the church of God in Christ, you didn't play around the altar. You didn't run around the altar. 
You didn't talk around the altar. That was a very sacred place. You didn't act a fool around the altar. You stayed back because that was a place of consecration. That was a place where we met God. That was a place where we met sacrifice. And I believe, wonderful people of God, in modern day Christendom, we need to go back to the sacredness of the altar. We need to go back to the consecrated place of the altar. Now that word altar is significant. It is mentioned about 374 times in the Bible. So it is a very important and significant word. The altar represents a place of consecration and a place of sacrifice. And also means that we do not keep anything to ourselves, but we leave all on the altar. The altar means that our life is for God, that God is our life, and that the meaning of our life is God. Is there anybody that's here or listening by way of recording that says, God is my life. God is my strength. God is my fortress. And without God, I can do nothing. And without Him, I would fail. Like the hymnal says, uh, it says, Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and yield him your soul. Now the soul represents your mind, your will, and your emotions. And I have a question. Is your mind yielded at the altar? Is your emotions yielded at the altar? Is your body yielded at the altar? Now it is important, wonderful people of God, that we understand the altar. In the Old Testament, there was many altars that were built and was built as a place of commemoration of how God dealt with man, how he delivered man, how he set man free. Abraham built an altar. Isaac built an altar. Jacob built an altar. David built an altar. Gideon built an altar. And any time that these progenitors of the faith would have an experience with God, they would build an altar, a place of consecration. And it was also a place where the generations to come could see what God had done for them. They will be able to see and to comprehend the sovereignty of God, the power of God. I have a question for you today. Do you have an altar? Have you built an altar so your children can see what God has done for you? Have you built an altar so your nieces and nephews and grandchildren can see what God has done for you? Yes. Well, brother preacher, are you asking me to go off and get some wood and to some nails and hammer and build an altar? No. What I'm asking you to do is find the place of altar in your heart. For it has to be a heart place. The altar of your heart, it has to be a commemoration of what God has done in your heart. So when you have an altar in your heart, it will be displayed out of your mouth. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you will get up and testify as we did at the old church and say, I thank the Lord for being here. I thank the Lord for being saved sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because I have an altar on the inside of my spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So the altar 
represents a genuine desire of the person to give themselves wholly to the things of God, wholly to the work of God, and to memorialize this work. It is significant that we share with the people of God, our brothers and sisters, of what God has done in our life. And it all starts from the altar of our heart. There will be sometimes a command of God. The Lord sometimes commanded altars to be built after he amazingly delivered. Look how he delivered the children of Israel after 400 years of oppression and delivered them right when they were getting ready to be succumbed by the by Egypt and, and by the soldiers and delivered them and brought them to the place of the promise and they shouted at the Jericho wall and the Jericho wall came down. And he said, I want you to get some stones, hallelujah. I want you to get some stones and for that represents the 12 tribes of Israel. And I want this to be set up as a memorial of what I have done for Israel. And as he did for Israel, glory to God. He can still do for us as he did back then. He's the same God. Yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. His love has not changed. His glory has not changed. His delivering power has not changed. He is still a healer, and it has not changed. Somebody show hallelujah. One of the greatest altars that was ever in earth was that on Golgotha's hill. And that was the place of sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. One of the most painful, painstaking sacrifices of our Lord and Savior that was hung high and stretched wide. And Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to me. What a sacrifice that God has done for us. Oh, as he came through the volume of the book, through 42 generations, and God caused him to be a sacrifice for the propitiation of our sins. He caused him to be a sacrifice for our justification. He caused him to be a sacrifice for our redemption. For we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Somebody say I've been redeemed. Somebody say I've been redeemed. So this altar is significant. The altar, the A-L-T-A-R, is for your A-L-T-E-R. Lord have mercy. The altar is for the altar, A-L-T-A-R, is for your A-L-T-E-R, is for your change, is for your modification, is for a change in your attitude and disposition. And I will always be able to tell when you don't have an A-L-T-A-R because there will not be an A-L-T-E-R in your attitude and disposition. And that's what the Holy Spirit comes to do. He comes to give an A-L-T-A-E-R. A-L-T-E-R. He comes to change your life. He comes to change your walk. He comes to change your disposition. He comes to change your heart. He comes to change your spirit for an A-L-T-E-R. And some of us want to get, continue in the same path. But if you get in God's presence, you will have an A-L-T-E-R. Something will change about your tongue. Something will change about the way you see things. 
something will change about your perspective because when in his presence is fullness of joy at his right hand pleasures forevermore see I will be able to tell if you've been in his presence because there's going to be an altar in your disposition there's going to be an altar in the way you think there's going to be an altar in the way you treat your brothers there's going to be an altar in the way you treat your sisters there's going to be an altar in your soul there's going to be an altar somebody say give me an altar an altar for the altar lord have mercy jesus lord i like an altar for the altar glory to god y'all will make me happy in this place somebody say give me an altar so this is so important. This is significant, wonderful people of God, that we have an altar in our heart. We're not building an altar with the wood, but we are building an altar in our heart. The law of God is written in our hearts. Well, where did you get that? I'm glad you asked Jeremiah 31, 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws in their inward parts and write in it their hearts and, and will be their God and they shall be my people. He writes it in your heart. The stamp is in your spirit. You are sealed by the day of redemption. He knows you by name. He's not confused about you. He knows your social security number. He knows your cell number. He knows your address. He knows the path that you take. He knows your mess ups. He, he knows the first one that broke your heart. He knows your failures. He knows what's going on on the inside of you. He even knows your thoughts way down the street. Our God knows us. He knows us inward. But the issue is, do we know him? Oh, that I would know him. Not just in the fellowship of his suffering, but in the power of his resurrection. And there is resurrection power with God. Somebody shout glory to God. This is significant. He knows us, but the altar causes us to know him. It's your all on the altar. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Somebody show hallelujah. hallelujah. So, in our text today, this is what I wanted to get to as I was building my case. I just gave you a little lettuce and tomato with some croutons and cucumbers. Now let me get to the text. In our text, during the time of Elijah, Israel was in rebellion against God. In other words, they were doing what they wanted to do the way they wanted to do it, and they had gotten off again into worshiping idols. Worshipping of Baal. And at this particular time, Ahab and that crazy lady Jezebel was in charge of everything. And they had turned Israel away from God. Be careful of your associations, wonderful people. Make sure that you have the type of posse that does not turn you away from God. You gotta have a group of people around you that are speaking the way you speak. You have to have people around you that are pouring into you and not taking away from you. You gotta have the right people around you because the enemy of your soul is diabolical and he'll put people around you that will suck the life out of you. That will be like leeches just taken from you. So it is important that you have the right people. From this point, you need to start doing some investigation. Did God send you or did you come from hell? 
Did God send you or are you here to mess up my life? Did God send you or are you here to bring about confusion? Did God send you or are you here to, to cause trouble in my life? See, I got to have the right folk that are around me. This is important, people of God, because the enemy wants you distracted and when you are not focusing on the author and the finisher of your faith. You have to have the right folk in your surroundings. You don't need nobody in your life telling you what you can't do and where you can't go. You need some folk in your life that I said, you can do it. You can make it. You can do all things through Christ that gives you the strength. You don't need no negativity in your life. You need some folk that are going to be saying, you can do this in Jesus' name. You can have the vision. You can have the dream. You can go as far as God wants you to go. Somebody tell her, hallelujah. So Israel, Israel had turned away from God. And at that particular time, he thought he was the only one left. And he was not the only one left. But he thought he was the only one left. And Elijah, he confronted Baal. Lord, have mercy. He confronted the prophets of Baal. And he said, all right, let's see who God is the real God. Yes, sir. Let's see who God got the power. Well, let's see what God you working with. Now, I didn't read this part, but these prophets got together and they began to call on their God and nothing happened. They screaming, they hollering, they falling all out, and it got so bad they started cutting themselves and blood stopped because when you start crying out at a stone, nothing is going to respond to you. And Elijah mocked them. He said, well, your God, he ain't answering you today. Your God ain't doing nothing. But step back and let me show you the real God. And he said, God of Abraham, of Isaac, Until you restore the altar, 
God to move. Some of you all are waiting for God to move. He said, I'm waiting for you to move. And when you restore back your consecration, when you restore back your sanctification, when you restore back what I told you to do the first time, when you stop debating with me as if ah, we on the same level. See, the problem is with the church, we don't realize we serve God, the, the real God, the, the sovereign God. He's not a God in a box. He's not an idol. He's not Santa Claus. He's not our butler. He's the sovereign God. That he sits high and he looks low until you realize that he's a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth until you realize that our God is in control of everything of Africa, of Asia. But when you come to the hold of the altar and restore your consecration, I say yes, Lord. It's good for us to restore the consecration. It's good for us to say yes to His will. Yes, to His way. Well, I say restore the altar. For so sometimes God won't move until there's restoration of an altar. Restoration, consecration. This is just the first message. Oh, I got some stuff to tell y'all down the road. Uh -huh. Sanctification. Yes, sir. Yes. Dedication. Yes. Consecration to the holding or setting apart yes. of anything to the worship and service of God. God says, I'm waiting for you, United States, to fall back on your face and restore the altar. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then what I hear from them, and I will forgive their sins, and I will heal the land. I'm still the God that heals. I'm still the God that moves. I still walk on water. Unto God, have you consecrated your mind? Yes. Have you consecrated your heart? Have you consecrated your ears? Oh, I hear Romans 12 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body. Oh, here comes the altar of sacrifice. Oh, what is the sacrifice? The sacrifice is you at the halls of the altar. For the A L T A R that brings forth the A L T E R. Somebody shout on that you pray. I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. See, the problem is the church has become so full of itself.
thought of sacrifice living. Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and your soul. Yes. I feel and sense such an anointing that's getting ready has already started. It's starting now. And I will restore it to you. When you give me what's mine, I'll give you what's yours. Lord, I'm under the When you give me what's mine, the Spirit of God is saying, I will give you what's yours. I will restore it to you. Are you willing to build the altar in your heart? In your heart. That's nice we come here to this altar. That's wonderful. But are you willing to build the altar right here where you will be a living testimony, a living sacrifice in the day where we are now in this season? God is not playing with the church. He's not playing with us. He's not playing with us. He's got our attention. He has our attention. The days of play church is over. He said, if you restore back to me the altar, restore back to me the sacrifice. Restore back to me the consecration. He said, I'll give you what you lost. That what you lost, I'll give it back to you. It is not God's will for us to lose. That's right, that's right, that's right. You know what I said? It's not God's will as saints of God for us to lose. He wants us to increase. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Yes, that's a mandate. That's, a, that's a part of our DNA. Amen. To be fruitful. So anytime that we start seeing mass casualties, it is a sign that God is speaking. You got to be able to get away from all that other stuff. They say, to your ears, your spiritual ears. God, what are you saying this season? I don't want to miss your voice. I don't want to miss you this season. What are you saying? If I have been in the flesh, if I wasn't hearing the Spirit of God, we would not be standing in this place right now. We stand in this place because irregardless of the pandemic, my eyes my focus, my ear was tuned to the Spirit of God. And right when the pandemic started, I was signing papers. I was signing papers. Because God's Word will not return more. I told you, church, last year, God said, possess the light. I told you, church, last year, that God said, accelerate the doors. I told you, church, last year to position yourself. I told, I see what God was saying to me, because it's one thing to preach it, it's another thing to see it manifest. And when I saw it manifested in my face, and the people of God saw it manifested, I said, God, I will forever praise you and give you thanksgiving and keep my ear to my sheep know my voice. I got something else to say, and I'm going to say this again. This is not the last land. More land is coming. I know it in my spirit. I told my wife, I said, I don't know why. I said, but more land is going to belong to us. More land is coming. Restored on today. 
I kept, kept hearing that word altar. Yes. For the last several weeks, I kept hearing that word. I kept hearing altar. And so I started doing a lot of reading and research about altars and some of the things that I've come across have been so shocking. Oh my God. And how God, from ages and years, how he dealt with man in regard to that one word. And how he always restored when an altar was put back in place. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I said, oh God, yes. wait till next week. I tell you, wait till I can't. It's so much that God has just been downloading. I'm like, oh Jesus, this is, it's just feeding my spirit. So I challenge you. I challenge you for those that are listening on this recording. I challenge you to restore the altar. Return back to the altar of sacrifice and watch God. Father, we thank you. We praise you for this time. We praise you for this season, this moment. The ones that are here, there's always a special blessing. Always a special blessing. Thank you for these musicians. Thank you for the singers. Thank you for the ones that can come. Thank you for the day that the entire church will be in this temple. Not too many days since. For you didn't give us a temple for us to look at. For you gave us a temple to worship in. So we can see people saved, healed, delivered, and set me free. And we will say again, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to tell you about Jesus. He'll be the greatest friend and Savior and deliverer of your life. Song says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. You can tell everything to Jesus. You can tell him your deepest secret. And you don't have to worry about it going anywhere. You being embarrassed. Bring it down a little bit. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. People, you need Jesus. You need a covering. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I was saying of the Lord that He is my refuge and fortress, my God, in what I trust. Surely He will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover me with His feathers. Under His wings shall thou trust. A thousand may fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But he shall not come nigh thee. You need Jesus. If you want to know him today, repeat after me, dear Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart to stay. I believe that you died and rose again for me. I confess you with my mouth and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Ask you to forgive me for my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. If you said that by faith, guess what? You're healed, you're delivered, and you're saved today. For all of you all that are listening and want to sow into the kingdom of God, you can do that by going to our website, www.livingrockchurch.net. So your tithes, so your offering. Also, you can call my wife. Those that are members, you can call my wife. And she can do a swipe for you. Or you can put a check in the mailbox at 1521 North Park, West Peoria, 61604. Don't go to 1208. It's <laughs> Nobody. 